Miami-Dade County Police Marine Patrol officers stopped a yacht near Key Biscayne last Friday that turned out to be a human smuggling boat with more than 30 people from Haiti on board. The officers stopped the 60-foot boat at around 11.15 a.m. near the iconic Stiltsville group of homes located in the shallows of Cape Florida and Key Biscayne. Following the initial contact, other agencies including Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, United States Border Patrol, Coast Guards, and the United States Customs converged on the luxury vessel. Government officials have not yet stated yet whether the yacht came from South Florida directly or from Haiti or if the immigrants made their way to some place like the Bahamas and paid the smugglers to bring them to the United States. Coast Guard Lieutenant Commander John Beal, who is also a spokesman for Homeland Security Task Force Southeast, stated that the vessel's point of origin is under investigation by United States Homeland Security investigation agents. A photo of the boat released by Border Patrol shows it with a motorized dinghy attached to the back. United States Customs and Border Protection released a photo of the migrants cramped in the cabin deck below. According to the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, the Coast Guard placed the Brits on board a cutter to be returned to Haiti. One of the two people police state are the smugglers was turned over to Homeland Security Investigations. The boat's arrival comes a month after Governor Ron DeSantis sent the state police officers and Florida National Guard soldiers to South Florida and the Keys in anticipation of a surge of immigrants from Haiti in the midst of ongoing gang violence and political turmoil in that country. Quote, the mass exodus has yet to materialize, but the violence in Haiti shows no signs of abating. Since the beginning of the year, more than 2,500 Haitians have been erased or injured. That was stated by the United Nations Political Missions in Port-au-Prince. And they also stated that this is the deadliest three-month period since it began tracking the deceased and injured in 2020. The large-scale coordinated attacks on public institutions and strategic infrastructures in the Haitian capital since February 29th have left at least 19 police officers deceased or injured and 22 police stations and other police buildings pillaged or burned. Friday stop comes a week after custom agents stopped a boat off the coast of Key Largo that federal agents stated was smuggling 14 people from Ecuador. On April 15th, United States Customs Air and Marine Operations agents tracked a center console boat as it traveled from the Bahamas to Key Largo. A custom airplane crew watched as the boat's operator received a large drum and refueled the vessel as it was underway. Several people were lying on the deck of the boat. They arrested Yasmin Lopez Torres, age 29, and Ronald Hernandez Almeida, age 34, both are Cuban nationals with parolee status to stay in the United States. Quote, both separately admitted to traveling to the Bahamas for the purpose of picking up 14 non-citizens to bring them into the United States in exchange for payment. As of Monday, Lopez Torres and Hernandez Almeida have not been formally charged, but they remain in custody facing multiple counts of conspiring to encourage and induce people to illegally enter the United States. The Coast Guard confirmed Monday that the people being smuggled are from Ecuador and they have been transferred to the custody of the Royal Bahamas Defense Force. I would just like to state that this is very, very dangerous. Again, we don't know who any of these people are. We don't know what their status is. We don't know what they may have done or did do directly in their countries of origin of which they are coming from, of which they are leaving, of which they are running away from. Uh, again, everybody has a past, and the past does matter. Just because you have a lot of people coming here for a brand new start does not erase whatever it is that their past may have been. Because whatever they were in the past, they chances are still are that exact same person because they have not suffered the consequences of whatever it is that they have already established, what it is that they have already done, and also more than likely intend to also do. And then you also magnify that by the fact that you have multiple others who also have a past, um, who may have criminal records, who were supposed to have, uh, you know, served time, who may have escaped custody and never served any type of time. Again, you have to put all of this directly into perspective. And you have people out here who are being paid during the nights to shuttle people to and from different areas in order to bring them to the United States. So I'm just going to put this what if directly out there, right? 
what if a lot of these people who are migrants, who are immigrants coming over to the United States, more than likely they still show allegiance directly to their country of origin? Who's to say that these people are not sleepers? And what I mean by that, what if a lot of the people that are coming over are just waiting for a point in time in order to cause a civil unrest or to take part in a civil unrest and to make it larger than what it would have been initially? Again, you have a lot of these people who are going to cause unrest. You have a lot of these people who, quote unquote, are paid actors to make certain groups look bad. Case in point, black Americans. You have a lot of people over here who reflectively, right, have melanation. So a lot of people are going to assume off the bat, oh, they look black. So the moment in time that they commit a crime, they happen to do something, something negative shows up online directly about them, people are going to assume and automatically put them over to the side with black people. And they're going to point their finger and say, oh, this is what we're talking about. Look at what this one did over here and yada, yada, yada. But not knowing the fact that this is an immigrant. This is not a person that that is not from here. They were not born and raised. They bloodline wise, you can't even trace them here, right? They're from a whole nother place. But again, just think about that for a second. You got fields, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of other people coming directly to the United States every single day. Again, you don't know where their allegiance lies. You don't know who they talk to every single night. You don't know who they're sending an SOS or a text message directly to. You don't know where their money is going and and what type of money is coming directly to them. Again, nobody knows anything about any of these individuals who's coming directly over here. We can only assume. We can only guess. We can only hope that the people coming over has the best interest for this country. And, you know, we got got some time. We got some time to see how everything is going to transpire, how everybody's going to be. Or we also have enough time to see how people are going to start to click up, how people are going to start to group up and align themselves with certain people, how they're going to make sure to separate themselves from other people. Again, going back to that one movie that just came out, where it was talking about a civil unrest and one of the guys in the military asked a group of people, are you American? And then they responded, yes, we're American. And he said, okay, what type of American? So I want people to just remember that when we happen to have a civil unrest and you start to see and remember all of these people that came directly over here, just remember that a lot of those people that came over here are not going to be for your protection, your safety. 